from a creepy doll lamp to weird phone calls, here's what you missed last week on my TikTok. What's up, glitches, and welcome back to Spooky Story Time. If you're new here, my name is Jess. People call me Anti Matrix, and I read your weird and unexplainable stories. All the stories that we read here are true stories that real people send in. So if you're into stuff like glitches in the matrix, the paranormal, dreams, and aliens, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you never miss a video. Also, make sure to check out my Anti-Matrix merch and all of my other links over at tessicavision.com. The link is down in the description. All the stories that you are about to see were posted last week over on my TikTok, and I've put together a little compilation for you. If you're looking to skip to a specific story, the timestamps are in the description as well. Grab your favorite snack, a comfort item to squeeze, and let's get weird. The person that submitted part 237, Am I Being Haunted or Hunted for Knowing Too Much, sent us an email with some answers to some questions and the picture that she was referring to. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to put that part right here now so you can like watch it or you can rewatch it to refresh your memory. If you have seen it, just like fast forward through the video um, and I will be showing you the update afterwards. Okay, here we go. Let's read some Glitch in the Matrix stories, part 237. Am I being haunted or hunted for knowing too much? Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I just found your page Friday and I'm hooked on all your stories. I don't know if this would be considered a good enough story, but I figured what the heck. I don't know. I guess let's see because I don't read these before. I just pick random ones and we're reading them. Let's For as long as I can remember, I have been my family calls blessed. I don't know if this is important to know, but I have suffered from depression and anxiety my whole life and I never spoke about any of it until I needed to. But one of my secrets is that I have been followed most of my life by what I think is a shadow person and a small girl and I never told anyone because my family is very religious. The only thing they really know about it is the fact that I have frequent night Nightmares. My nightmares mostly consisted of something chasing me, but every now and then I would have something called precognitive dreams. Okay, so a premonition. Usually I would just call my most religious aunt and have her pray for whoever it is, and within the next two weeks we would find out who it is, and every time they died exactly the way they did in my precognitive dream. The person who ends up dying I never see who is, but m the manner of how they die is always correct. In one of my nightmares, I finally met the thing that was following me, a little girl who sort of resembles Samara from The Ring. Oh, no, 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 no. You said little girl, and I was like, okay, little girl. And you said the ring. Nope. Big fucking big fat. No. She had long black greasy hair that covered her face, really pale skin. She had no shoes on and wore a white dress that was extremely dirty and worn. In this nightmare before I met the girl, I was guided by a cat. There's a lot of specifics and details that would make this whole story really, really long. So long story short, the girl told me that she wanted me and that she would have me sooner or later. Lucky for me, the cat guided me turned out to be my grandma who died when I was young. I used to call her mom instead of my biological mom and she protected me from the girl. Let me tell you that girl was mad. She revealed her face and it looked fake like it was a skin cover and she had black eyes and black wings that came out of her now hunched spine. She scratched the whole sky, went from beautiful sunset colors to dark cloudy thunder and lightning skies. I woke up in a cold sweat as I usually do from my nightmare. Oh my god. The thing following me continued but sometimes the shadow man who was very tall and thin, he wore a long trench coat and a hat and a hat, the hat man, would be with the little girl and I'd always see them from a distance. Sometimes she was holding his hand. They used to mess with my stuff in the house and whisper slash yell in my ears while I was in bed. It was very scary, but I never told anyone about it because I didn't want them to think I'm crazy or want them to find out about my mental illness. You used to whisper and or yell in your ear while you were in bed? I don't know which one is scarier. Is it scary to have a whisper? Is it scary to have a freaking scream? When I finally left for college, I thought I would be leaving them behind and I was relieved. My relief was short-lived when they started messing with me in my dorm apartment too. Oh my God, are they attached to you? Things would go missing or be moved from where I left them. Like I had a couple of friends over because my dorm was an actual apartment. So I had a kitchen and they brought meat over for me to cook. I put it in the sink to defrost and we all sat in the living room to watch TV. When I went to check on it, the meat was on the other side of the kitchen. I asked them if they moved it and they both said they haven't left the living room at all. I was the only one who's been in the kitchen. One weekend I was alone because my roommate left for Connecticut. I had recut my bangs and I took a selfie in the bathroom to send to my best friend at the time. She called me immediately and asked me to leave the apartment. I asked her why and she said, just leave and go somewhere because I have something to tell you. I left the apartment and called her back and she asked me who was in the apartment with me and I told her, no one, I was alone. Then she told me the picture I sent her was a face of a little girl, but she was see-through. I was so terrified to go back to the apartment after that. Oh my God. Could you see it? Could you see it in the picture? Like when you looked back at the picture that you sent, did you see it? Oh my, do you have it? <gasps> 
She followed me. Oh, no. In the apartment, I only had one roommate, and she called herself spiritual and actually practiced white magic. She woke up one morning and waited until I got up. She explained to me that what she did and how she's gifted, and then she asked me if I ever had any experiences. I told her about the shadow person and the little girl from my nightmare, and her face went pale. She explained to me that she woke up and she saw something at the edge of my bed. It had long bone skinny arms and a hunched back with long greasy black hair and it was crawling from the foot of my bed towards me she said she asked me what it was and what it wanted and it pointed to me (laughs) she told me she said a prayer to try to get rid of it and it seemed like it worked i still have nightmares but it wasn't until i tried to be more in touch with my gift that the things following me stopped of course it happened in another nightmare but that's a story for another time after that the only nightmares i've had are my precognitive dreams which sadly came true um um, we need the story of how it ended in another dream. We need we need, we need, need to know. I would like to be in touch with this side of me more, but it's hard to do it on your own trying to gather the right information without accidentally letting something in. Every time I try on my own, something always happens or I get a weird feeling like something being mad that I know too much and instantly start to tear and a rushing feeling of fear. I've tried sending this email three times now and for some reason I just find it sitting in my outbox with each time getting this feeling. I don't think I am still being followed, but I have instances where I feel like I'm being watched. I know from one of my nightmares that it can't touch me and that I made it mad it backed off but I'd also like to know more so that I can protect myself if you have any suggestions that would be greatly appreciated I have a bunch of other stories if you're ever interested but it's just nice to get this off my chest since I don't really tell anyone thanks for listening I'm going back to watching your videos now I can't personally give you advice on um, like protecting yourself and being able to tap into that that side of yourself more because I am not there yet Um, so I don't personally have any advice but I know that so many people that watch will have advice so guys give your advice to her in the comments please and thank you i also think it's very interesting that that thing seemed to be attached to you and why was the hat man with it that story was crazy thank you so much for sharing okay now here's the update hi indie matrix hi thank you so much for posting my story I do somewhat have an update. Yes, when I look back at the picture, I did see her face. No, I don't still have it. But as I was going through my old Facebook pictures to see if I could find it, I passed a picture that I never noticed before. My family lived in my uncle's during the time I had the most activity, which I thought was weird because like I said, I have a very religious family. My uncle is Catholic and he worked in the church and my two male cousins were altar boys. Here's the picture. I zoomed in and took a picture of what I think is something on the right side. If you're looking at the picture of my sister's head in the mirror, let me know if maybe I'm crazy. I did take the picture from my laptop i did not alter this in any way okay oh oh my god yes i do <gasps> i do see something up there wait she sent a, a zoomed in more zoomed in pic- okay this is it this is it I'm, i made sure i'm not blocking anything else that is creepy as fuck to me i don't know what you guys are seeing but to me that looks like a face and like a whole body and like an arm it looks like the arm is up in the air on the left <sighs> what is that As for the story about how my haunting stopped, it happened in a nightmare and it was actually quite relaxing. I didn't have the same fear that I usually do when I'm in my nightmares. Instead of running, I was actually upset and ready to confront it. It started off in a huge house. I've never seen anything like it before. Almost like a palace with high ceilings and everything is white. It was incredibly bright in there too. It was as if the whole place was lit with the brightest white light bulb they could find. The people that walked about the palace mingled with one another in what seemed to be a semi-slow motion in audible way like in the movies with nothing but blurred and what I could make out to be smiles on their faces. I assumed there to be laughter, but it didn't sound like it came from them themselves. It was more like it filled the air because their mouths didn't move. Their presence all felt familiar, but no one seemed to have noticed me. I walked around and soon noticed that I was being followed. This person stood out because he moved at the same pace as I did, unlike everybody else. And while everyone wore all white, this person was in all black long robe with a hoodie. A couple of feet ahead of me, I saw spiral steps. I walked towards them and went up the stairs looking down. When I reached the top, I saw the hooded figure started to climb the spiral step. I frown, but I didn't seem to have any sense of urgency towards it. I start down the white walled hall filled with family pictures of happy moments with no faces. I was drawn into the room filled with what you would expect to see in a nursery, but no baby. For some reason, I decided to confront the thing following me. The only instinct I had was to protect the baby, even though there wasn't a baby here. So I walked back to the door and waited. It didn't take long for the figure to walk up to the doorway of the room that I was in. There it was just standing there. It didn't say anything and I couldn't see its face, but I felt it was staring at me. We stood there staring at each other and I tilted my head to the side and I said to it, you can't touch me, can you? It was low, but it sounded like it grunted in annoyance. Does that make you upset? It raised its arm and the sleeve fell to its elbow, exposing its pale bony arm. It just stood there and pointed at me and I smirked. 
That was the first night I woke up to a nightmare not drenched in a cold sweat. When I woke up, I felt something come over me, a sense of empowerment, I guess, maybe. I don't know. But thanks again for listening to my stories. I love that. I love that in your dream, you were like, you, you realize like, I'm good. You can't actually hurt me. And then like the shit stopped. That's awesome. Thank you so much for the update. Let's read one of your weird stories, part 239. Hey, TikTok, I did a different intro. Can you, can you not hold my video today? The doll lamp. I'm so scared. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi, you're welcome for the super long story in advance. Yes. I have a lot of stories regarding the supernatural, so much so that I'll have to split it into three separate stories. But for now, I'll start with my first supernatural experience. Holy moly. When I was a kid, my birth vessel, who some call mother, wait, you call, you call your mom your birth vessel? <laughs> I love that. When I was a kid, my birth vessel took me, my older sister, and my two younger brothers to see a show. When we walked inside, every kid was given a ticket with a number on it. They told us if our number gets called, we'd get a prize at the end of the show. We took our seats, and the big red curtains revealed a stage full of toys and more. It felt like I had just walked into Santa's workshop. I don't even remember what the show was about because I had my eyes on this blue bike the entire time. When the show came to an end, they started calling out numbers, and one by one, the kids went on stage to pick out whatever they wanted. I got really upset when a little boy picked the blue bike that I had my eyes on. We waited and waited for our numbers to be called. Finally, my sister and I both got our numbers called. We were the last two people called and we made our way to the stage. By this point, most of the people cleared out and the stage was just about empty. My sister and I walked up to a worker and mentioned our names were called. It seemed like they had called too many numbers out because he looked around to see if there was anything left that we could take. He calls over another worker cleaning the stage and asked if they had anything that we could take home. He looked at both of us and asked, are you sisters? We said yes and he proceeded to hand us an odd lamp. This lamp had a poor porcelain doll attached to it. Nope. Just don't take it. Don't take that. She had light brown hair done up in curls, brown eyes, a white dress with hints of pink ribbons on it. My birth vessel was the happiest about this because my sister and I were more tomboys and hated dolls. We gave it to my birth vessel, but she demanded that we keep it in our room, which we shared with my brothers. She placed it on the dresser right next to the door. So when you walk in, she'd be face level right next to you looking straight ahead no fucking thank you to the left of the dresser was a bed my brother shared and in front of the dresser was a bunk bed i slept on the top and my sister on the bottom bunk uh, i'm already like noping right out of this story one day one of my brothers told us that something happened he was very calm but clearly weirded out he mentioned he had woken up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night and saw the doll slowly moved her head to the left to face him before he blinked and her head suddenly faced forward again we didn't believe him since we played a lot of pranks on each other only this time he never said he was kidding we always said we were kidding if it was a prank or a joke throw it fucking away now the next morning my baby brother said he woke up in the middle of the night and saw the doll move her head too my sister and i figured our brother put him up to this but he said he didn't again never mentioning he was kidding one bright and sunny morning my sister and i were in the room sitting on our brother's bed having a conversation suddenly she called my name i could hear the horror yet calm in her voice more like she was shocked more than anything i turned to what she was looking at and we both saw the doll slowly turning her head to face us we both blinked at the same time because the next thing we knew she was facing straight ahead again I personally searched the doll and realized her body was completely attached to her neck and head, meaning it was impossible to move the head even if you tried. Oh my god, I have so many chills. We called an emergency sibling meeting and talked about the doll. My brother was glad to know he finally believed. Now we had to figure out what to do. We told our birth vessel and of course she didn't believe us. She thought it was some nonsense we made up to get rid of the doll, so she refused to remove it. From that day on, every single night her head would move to face us no matter where we were in the room. We decided to cover her face with a cloth. Okay, okay. The next morning it was folded next to her. We told this to our birth vessel and she said she came in to check on us and folded the cloth. <sighs> Thank the fucking Lord. I'm having deja vu. The next day we tried it again, but this time the cloth was on the floor. We told Birth Vessel not to move the cloth and she admitted she was too tired to come into our room last night and she would never have thrown the cloth on the floor as she always tried to get us to clean our room. Every night we covered her head and every morning the cloth was on the floor. I'm getting like major deja vu right now. I swear I remember reading this story. It's this part where like the cloth is covering it and it fell and the folding... I really feel like I read this, but it's not marked in my inbox that I read it or that it was one of the stories. So we're just going to keep reading it. If you've heard it, just scroll past, I guess. I don't know. One day, the four of us were playing in the room, feeling like we are being watched. I grabbed my brother's baseball and walked over to the doll. My brother shouted, don't be a hero. Half serious, but half jokingly. I threatened the doll to leave us alone. I told her she's weak and not even alive. So I wasn't afraid of her. I even messed up her hair. Friends. 
<laughs> Why would you do that? Besides, all she did was move her head. After enough of this, I didn't think there was anything to be afraid of. That same night, I had a nightmare I still remember to this day. I could see myself sleeping in bed when the doll appeared on the top bunk behind me. She pulled out a knife and stabbed me, waking me up in a cold sweat. I immediately looked at the doll whose head was facing up, looking at me. Only this time, she wasn't smiling. This time, she was really mad. I jumped down to my sister's bed and slept between her and the wall. The doll stared at me all night. Since then, my siblings stopped experiencing anything supernatural. It was all directed at me now. She glared at me and only me every moment that she got. I would walk in and see her face glaring at me from the corner of my eye and when I turned, she was back to normal. But this was nothing new. It was something I was used to and I even stopped being afraid of the supernatural at this point. Yeah, she's after you because you were fucking with her, man. One day I was sick and my birth vessel let me watch TV in her room while she parked the car after returning from the doctor's office. I was upstairs when I heard footsteps coming up the stairs. I figured my birth vessel was home and would come in the room any second now, but she never did. I remember realizing we didn't have that many steps, so I turned down the volume and heard the footsteps again. However, I also realized I never heard the loud creaking of the front door being opened, and I could hear the footsteps start halfway up the stairs and then work their way to the top before starting halfway up the stairs again and repeating. I came out of the room and followed the sound of the steps with my eyes, hearing every step being stomped on but not seeing anything. I stood at the top of the stairs, and when the sound stopped in front of me, I reached out and felt nothing. Again, the footsteps started halfway and continued to the top. I walked closer to it, more curious than scared. Again, I reached my hand out, and the pattern continued. Whatever it was stood in front of me each time. You are a brave brave soul. I ran back upstairs, slammed the door shut, locked it, jumped on the bed, pulled the covers up, and turned the volume up on the TV. Okay, maybe I'm not that brave. <laughs> I could hear the footsteps start the pattern, only this time it continued to pass the top step, pass the bathroom, pass my bedroom, down the hall, and stop in front of the bedroom door. The doorknob slowly turned, and the door swung open as if it was unlocked. I swore I locked it, so I got up to check. The door was still locked. I couldn't turn the doorknob. The footsteps started again from the middle of the stairs to right in front of the room I I was in. I slammed it shut again and ran into the bed, turning up the volume. Once again, the steps stopped in front of the door, and when I heard the loud creak of the front door being opened and my siblings' voices followed, I ran out of the room to join them downstairs, telling them my story. They looked at each other and questioned if the doll moving ever really happened. By this point, it had been months since she left them alone and targeted me. I felt so alone, but was able to convince them it did happen, and we all saw it. Another time, I ran downstairs to grab my siblings and I some snacks. I opened the top cabinet. We kept our big knives in a clear open top container on the top shelf so we couldn't get it too easily. I noticed one of the knives moved. It balanced on the edge, pointing directly at me. I stared at it in disbelief before it jumped at me. My dodgeball instincts kicked in and I jumped back. The knife seemed to have been trying to cut me in half. When it hit the floor, missing my foot at the last moment, the second knife jumped at me. Again, I managed to dodge this one and quickly close the cabinet before another was able to fly out. I threw myself to the ground and searched for knives, for strings, or anything that could explain this, there was nothing. What the fuck? Another time I decided to face the doll alone. I stayed in the basement by myself but felt that I was being watched. At the corner of my eye, I saw a girl around my height wearing the same dress as the doll, only instead of her light brown curly hair, she had long black hair that covered her face. It was the first and only time I saw her as herself and not the doll. Nothing else happened that night, but throughout the years, weird things kept happening. One of my lovebirds died and we have no idea how. She was covered in blood and had no open cut cuts of any sort. Her lover freaked out, didn't eat or drink, and cried himself to death. Oh my god, that's so sad. Another one of my birds looked like he had been stomped on and his head was missing. A few days later, his head returned with his beak detached as if it was placed for me to find. The head was nowhere near where the body had been found. Oh my god. Finally, one day after years of this, I snapped. I threatened my birth vessel that I would smash the doll with a hammer if she kept it in the room any longer. She removed it and placed it in her room. When we moved, my sister and I opened the box with the doll lamp and threw it away. My birth vessel asked about it and we said we had no idea where she went. Ever since then, I've had more and more supernatural activities happening to me throughout my life. I'm no longer afraid of them. I even find comfort in some of them, but that I'll save for another story time. P.S. This isn't my craziest story, just my first. Until the next time, love you, Anti Matrix, and thank you for your time. 
this is not your craziest story? This truly was a long story, so much so that I literally do not have any time left in this video to discuss it. But holy shit, that was fucking crazy. I hate dolls. Clearly there was a spirit attached to that doll because you saw the actual fucking spirit. <sighs> Thank you so much for sharing. That was really good. I want to hear everybody's comments, questions, all the things down below. Also, have you heard the story before? Have I read the story before? Because the only part I remembered was the part with the folding of the cloth. I don't know. I'm like half deja vu, half terrified. I don't know. Okay, I love you so much. Bye. You guys tag me in some good TikToks. Here's a couple. So when I was around 12 years old, I went to a football game with a really close friend of mine. And we went with her family. It was her two parents and then her younger sister, who was around four years old at the time. When we got to the football game, me and my friend, of course, wanted to sit at the very top. So we led the way and everyone trailed behind us. And we get all the way to the top. We're about five rows from the very top. And these bleachers were really tall, like probably around two stories tall. So they were also the type of bleachers that when you look underneath the seat in front of you or under your own seat, there was no bottom to it. So all you saw was the grass or the stone that was directly underneath your feet. So we're enjoying the football game and suddenly our team makes a really good play. And I can't even remember what the play was now. All I know is that the whole stand just stood up and then jumped up on the seat in front of them and just started jumping and cheering really loudly. Well, I also stood up to do the same thing. However, before I could step up onto the second step, it was like someone put their hands over my ears and everything was really muffled and quiet. Now I could tell that people were still screaming and cheering, but it felt like it was really far off in the distance. And I was sitting there trying to gather my thoughts, trying to figure out what was happening to me when I noticed something out of my peripheral vision. And when I looked to the side, there was this man who was 12 to 15 feet away from me. And he was just standing on the same spot I was, like he wasn't up on the bleacher in front of him either. And he just stared at me. But when I looked at him, I thought, am I really seeing this? Because this guy doesn't look like he's here. But I could tell he was wearing a black suit and he was just staring at me. And I was really freaked out. But like I said, everything was still in slow motion and just very muffled and quiet. And it was like just me and him were in this moment together. And suddenly his eyes go to my friend's four-year-old sister who's standing on the bleachers in front of me. So my eyes follow his and I look at her and then I look back at him and we meet eyes again. And then he looks at the bleacher underneath me, behind my feet like that. And I thought, what the heck? And when I looked back to meet his eyes again, he was gone. And then I thought, this is really creepy. I don't know what's going on, but then it was like the sound just all came back to me again. It was like nothing was covering my ears anymore. Everything was normal. And then people started calming down and everyone went to step down and sit on their seat. And so did her sister. Unfortunately, because she was so small and only four years old, she didn't step down before she went to sit down. And instead she just sat down while she was standing on that bench in front of us and went butt first through that opening, approximately two stories up. And it all happened so fast, I just dropped to my knees and I reached my arm way down underneath the bleachers, just praying that I could grab her. And I grabbed her by her ankle, just dangling there, falling midair, grabbed her by her ankle. And I was so afraid to move. I had a really good grip on her, but I was so afraid to move because what if I dropped her? Because she would have fell head first right onto the pavement. And, um, you know, being a four year old girl or anybody for that matter, falling that high and landing on your head is not a good ending. So I just started hollering for someone to help me and everyone surrounding me in the bleachers also dropped to their knees. We squeezed as many of us as we could in there and just pulled her out. And the poor little darling was still holding on to her bag of popcorn. And, um, yeah, I never told them the rest of that story. Uh, they probably just thought I had fast reflexes, um, but there's no way I would have been able to save her had it not been for that man. Oh my God. I have so many ideas on when that could be. I feel like he could have been so many things. He could have been a guardian angel. He could have been some sort of other guide or spirit. He could have been the spirit of like a deceased a relative or um, ancestor or something here to help. He could have been, he could have been death. 
He could have been death. He could have been a reaper. And maybe he didn't want to take her yet or something. I don't know. I don't know. But that story is so cool and so crazy. And you were definitely like taken out of that moment for a second to be able to see what this being wanted you to see in order to save that little girl. Like, amazing. One of my questions is, your friends and the people that you were with, did they see you just sitting there kind of having this moment or did they not? Maybe they were just like way too into what was happening. Did the time slow at all? I don't think you said the time slowed. You just said that the sound was very muffled and very far away, but everything was still happening. That is a, such a good one. Such a good one. Okay, let's check out another one. So I'm kind of freaked out right now. This morning I woke up to a text message from one of my friends asking me if I was good at 3.20 in the morning. And I was just like, I'm confused because I was asleep. I also had a missed call from her at that same time. So I was thinking maybe she was drinking or, you know, whatever. It was three in the morning. And she texted me, she got a missed call from me at the same time. We're in t different time zones, so I'm two hours ahead of her. Right now I'm visiting family, whatever. Um, and I was just confused because I was asleep. And she said, it left a rumbly voicemail, five seconds. She was worried I was getting kidnapped. I'm like, huh? And this is her call from me. So 1.20 in the morning is 3.20 here, same time. And I also got a voicemail from her that was five seconds long. It's just a beep and the transcription says hello. So we both got a call from each other at the same time and we both got a voicemail from each other at the same time, but we never called each other. I was asleep and has this ever happened? Like, is it, what is going on? Why did this video give me such bad chills? Such a simple thing, but so fucking weird and unexplainable. Like, it's really freaking me out. Wait, before we comment on this, I looked in the comments and then there was another video that she put about weird phone calls at her parents' house to where she was visiting. Wait. Okay, so this video that I made blew up unexpectedly. Um, you can go watch it if you want, read the comments. Um, but while we're on the topic of creepy phone calls, I thought I could freak you guys out just a little bit more. So when I initially made this video, I was visiting my parents' house, and while I was there, they were actually getting some weird phone calls too. So my parents still have a house phone. I don't know why, they've just had one forever and they just refuse to get rid of it, so. <laughs> anyway, they kept getting weird calls on the house phone and they'd be at random times throughout the day, like 11.40 p.m. or like 1.20 in the morning or even like nine in the morning sometimes. It was very inconsistent and it was from a private number. So there's no phone number associated with it, unfortunately. So my parents wouldn't answer the call, but they would leave these voicemails that were like recordings of TV shows or songs. And like the TV shows were like, really random like it was it's one of them sounded like law and order or something and like talking about death or like sexual things or like recordings of like a baby it was just really eerie really weird and they told me that this has been going on for the past month and a half because it happened while i was there and i was like who the fuck is calling and i actually got one of them on video so i'm gonna play that real quick Like it's just a recording of a TV show, I think. I don't know. And then it would just disconnect like this. So I wanted to see if anyone has ever experienced something like this before or if you guys know like what the hell's going on there because yeah, it's really weird. So like, I wonder, does this have to do with where she is like there's got to be some sort of like spirits or entities or something that's like that are making these phone calls to the parents leaving these what is with those fucking weird weird voicemails of like recordings of things if it was like all the same recording or if it was like all the same um like topic on the recording i would say maybe someone's trying to tell you something um but they don't seem to be all exactly the same 
So I don't know what's up with that, but there's like that's going on with the phone. And then while she's there, the weird phone call thing happens with like her friend is like, is someone trying to contact you from another timeline? Is this like a, a timeline crossover situation or is it like some weird evil spooky entity situation? I don't know. And I feel like the reason that I don't have that many ideas on what it could be is just freaking me out so bad, man. What do you guys think? Let's read one of your weird, creepy stories, part 240. Visits from a shapeshifter. Hello, Auntie Matrix. Hi, I love your videos so much. They make me feel less alone in my experiences and valued for what has happened to me. I wanna share my weird stories with you. I've got two of them from the same house. I'm so glad I love you. When I was a little girl, around eight to nine years old, I think, we lived in a house on the mountain with 10 acres. Oh my God, that's my dream. Too bad one acre of land on Long Island is one million dollars. Not much around us other than forest. Our house was large. A formal living room was at the front of the house with large windows that overlooked the entire county. On one side of the living room was my mom and stepdad's room and on the opposite side was my bedroom. I always slept with my door open. My dog slept in my bed with me every night. One night I woke up because my dog was growling. I rolled over and saw her looking out my door out into the living room. My mother's door is at the other end. All of a sudden, she starts barking. I looked out and saw my mom walking from the windows through the living room and towards the kitchen it looked just like my mom but as it reached the kitchen it turned into only what i can describe as a blue flame what still with a humanoid figure but all blue and bright like fire my dog was going crazy but wouldn't leave my side i screamed as loud as i could and my actual mom came out of her bedroom and came to me i knew it wasn't her and it scared the living daylights out of the second time was super creepy uh the first time was also creepy <laughs> All the way across the house from those large windows slash the formal living room was our living room with the TV. When sitting on the couch, you could see the formal living room. My stepdad, my sister, and I were all sitting on the couch watching TV. My mom was taking a nap in her bedroom. Suddenly, we heard the door open and all three of us watched my mom walk across the formal living room from her room towards my room. My sister even called out to her, hi, mommy. She didn't look at us, didn't speak, didn't even acknowledge us at all. We never watched her walk back towards her room and none of us followed her, just stayed on the couch. About 10 minutes later, my mom came came out of her bedroom. I knew you were going to say that. She had just woken up from her nap. All of us freaked out. Wait, you didn't just walk out of your room? We all three just watched you walk towards my room. My mom confirmed she most definitely did not walk out of the room and had just woken up. Still gives us all chills knowing we all experienced it and had no explanation. I have many more stories from that house, but as my mom is one of my most important people in my whole life to this day, it makes me feel uneasy knowing there was a shapeshifter or something pretending to be her thank you for reading i hope you have a spectacular day first of all love love pets love pets always protecting you and that dog was not leaving your side because he was like but he was letting you know he was like some shit's going down that's not that's not mom and i'm gonna make sure you're okay and i love i love him for it i love that doggy okay so like originally i'm thinking this is a mimic right this is definitely a mimic but does a mimic turn into a fucking flame i've never heard that in my entire life have you I wonder if this will work. I'm going to reply to one of your comments like I used to do. Maybe they'll push it out then. Here we go. Let's read some Glitch in the Matrix stories, part 241. Changing my first line didn't work. TikTok's still holding the video, so we're just going to go back to the old one. Mom and I may have been abducted by aliens. Hi, Auntie Jess. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> my daughter calls my sister's wife, Andy Jess. That's weird. But hi! So I've never reached out before because I never felt like my incident was a glitch in the matrix, but I've always had some suspicion of aliens. My mom and I went missing for an entire day. I remember it as clear as yesterday. We had my eighth birthday party. We had some of my friends over, cake, candy, and gifts, the whole nine yards. But we went to bed like any other night because it was actually a Wednesday and we both had school or work the next day. When I went to school on Thursday, all my friends were saying how lucky slash spoiled I was that my mom let me stay home from school for my birthday. I went home and asked my mom, hey mom, my friends are asking me before I could ask she said I know everyone has been asking me the same thing we stared at each other for a few moments and she finally said we slept for an entire day or we lost a whole day somehow we went to bed Wednesday night and awoke Friday morning at our normal scheduled time that was more than 24 hours however to us there wasn't any point where we awoke not to use the restroom not to eat not to drink water not because the sun came up the next day and our alarms went off we just disappeared for more than 24 
24 hours from existence. At the time, I was super into Dragon Ball Z and they always played the seasons in chronological sequence. Even there, I was an entire episode behind. There was an entire new intro and plot I had not seen in the previous episode. To this day, my mom and I will sometimes bring up that time in our life that was completely inexplicable. I've told my wife, my sister, who was born the year after this happened, but no one can ever come up with an actual reason or explanation as to what could have happened to us. If you can put my story out there, I'd love to hear what people have to say. Kind regards, Edward. Before I get any crap, I left his name because he left his at. So I assumed it was okay. Oh my God. Okay. So you guys lost an entire day. It could have been an alien abduction, but I feel like in most abduction stories that I get, it's not like an entire day that's missing. It's like a few hours, but still, still could have been. Also wondering, did you switch timelines for some reason in your sleep? Because even just the fact, yeah, you lost a whole day, but then even just the fact that the whole intro and stuff was like different for Dragon Ball Z, like that kind of like makes me feel like you somehow like went into a different timeline where it was like a different day and you lost a day somehow. And then that was something that was different, like a small thing that was different. Wait, but no, when you go back, when you go back episodes, right, does it say that they switched it? Or like, had it always been the one that you saw after the, the time loss? Either way, man, these stories where people lose time, like that must really fucking freak you out. I can't even imagine what that feels like. That, that would make my head just be like, whoa. <laughs> okay, Edward wants your opinions in the comments. Let's hear it. This guy went viral, over 4.4 million views, saying that this mountainside just opened up from this door here, and he saw an eye peeking through it. There, right up there. That thing was open. It opened completely up, and then it closed back up. And there's a little slot in it right up there. You can see that little slot where it looked like somebody was staring out of. Dude, giants are freaking real. I don't care what anybody says. Now this guy's saying he believes in giants and he's saying that this is a type of a giant. Is this a giant eyeball with an eyelid opening up and he's seeing their eye? Or is this some kind of a doorway for interdimensional beings such as Bigfoots and or other extraterrestrial interdimensional beings? Do a little research on the Nephilim giants and take a look around you because if your eyes are open, you're going to see that this world is starting to crumble and all kinds of things are going on all around us and everybody's still pretending that nothing is happening and everybody's starting to wake up. Now, I don't have the answers by any means here, but really just looking at this rock formation, it looks like a face to me. It almost looks like maybe this is like, I don't know, fucking Transformers or something. Who knows, man? All I know is this is really interesting and this isn't the last that we've seen of this mountain or this guy and this story. Hang on to your seats because we're waking up. Let's read some Glitch in the Matrix stories, part 242. Communicating with spirits gone wrong. Hi, Into Matrix. Hi. I have a story that's more of a ghost story, but I have been seeing a lot of those on your channel lately, so I thought I would share. This is a long one, so bear with me. Yes, friends, these are not just Glitch in the Matrix stories. As you know, it started off as that, but then it branched out to all different weird, unexplainable stories. So send me whatever you like. When I was 18, my best friend and I moved in together. At the time, we were both really into metaphysical things like crystals, tarot cards, etc. One night, we were reading our tarot, and I felt a presence with us. Can't really explain why, but I just felt it. We both did. We decided to get our own pendulum and start to ask it questions. For those who don't know, it's a crystal suspended from a string or a train, and you let it freely circle or swing for yes or no answers to questions. We asked it questions like, is there someone here with us? Yes. Are you a woman? Yes. Did you live here? Yes. Are you alone? No. Do you need our help? Yes. After a series of questions, the spirit led us to believe that it was stuck here and needed our help to be freed. What was really crazy is my friend and I both got a very clear mental image of a woman, and as we described her to each other, we both pictured a pale woman with long, curly, dark hair, wearing a white dress with long sleeves, and was very beautiful. I started to feel uneasy, though, and we decided to recalibrate the pendulum, asking to speak only to the divine energy of the universe. It's hard to explain the feeling we both felt then, but it was like visceral anger. I felt like I could hear screaming in my ears and like the energy in the room was trembling and shaking with fury. We asked if the spirit was benevolent. No. We asked if it wanted to hurt us. Yes. 
Oh my God. We immediately called our friend who was more experienced in white magic and she instructed us to cleanse the space immediately with sage and get rid of anything we felt the spirit's presence on. We did and didn't have any more issues after that, but I was so freaked out by the experience of opening myself to allow that spirit to come through that I stopped doing all things magic slash metaphysical for many years. About three and a half years later, I had my son who was two years old and I had moved into another house. About a year after moving in, I started having spooky experiences for the first time since that last incident. My roommates who lived in the basement were always asking me if I was up at night because they heard loud footsteps on the middle floor. I was not. Later, my roommates moved out and I was living in the house by myself with my son. Sometimes I'd hear noises in the night, but weirder than that, some nights my son would hysterically cry if I tried to put him to bed in his bedroom, but not if we laid in my room, even if I stayed in the room with him. I know this is not uncharacteristic of a two-year-old, but he hadn't had issues with this before. He would also be fixated on one corner of his room and would say he was scared. I kept a protective crystal in his room, but mostly tried to convince myself that I was imagining things because I get freaked out easily. Until one night we were in my bedroom and he had fallen almost all the way asleep on me. Then he bolted upright, turned all the way around and stared at the doorway to my bedroom and said, he's here over and over. I clarified he was saying he's here and he said yes. And I said, who's here? A man. A man is here? Yes. Where is he? He pointed to the hallway and said, right there. My husband went and grabbed the protective crystal from my son's bedroom and put it in the hallway. And then my son said, he's gone now. Oh my God, I have so many chills. I was so freaked out. I had a friend at work who practiced Reiki and white magic. I called her and asked her if she would come and cleanse my house. When she came a couple of days later, she told me she sensed five spirits in my house, two benevolent women and three malevolent male spirits who had bound them there. My friend, without ever hearing the story of the prior experience, described the same exact woman, pale, long, curly, dark hair, wearing a white long sleeve dress, and I nearly fell over. She said the source of the spirits was black trunk that I had in my living room. Again, I was shocked because I had brought it from the Goodwill shortly before the first incident with my roommate in Denver. I left it out that week with the garbage and never had any issues since. Moral of the story, cleanse your shit from Goodwill. I was literally just going to say that. I was going to say moral of the story, always cleanse your shit, especially if you get it from a fucking thrift shop or from another person or something. Always cleanse 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 oh my god now i'm sitting here thinking like is there are things in my house that i haven't cleansed that need to be <laughs> they need to be cleansed that's so weird though right because the spirit was like attached to the trunk and then i guess you like let it through more when you use the pendulum and then you cleanse and it went away you went away you thought and then for some reason a man came back and and that spirit was in the house in the new house with you but there were other spirits like did that spirit come over with the trunk and then somehow i don't know i don't no, I don't know. What do you guys think? Comments, comments. Let's read some Glitch in the Matrix stories, part 243. Our dead grandpas saved my husband's life. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. Sorry, this is a long one. This truly is a really long one, so I'm going to talk really fast. Keep up. I've been thinking about writing to you for a long time. My best friend showed me your page and I have been obsessed ever since because it helps me to feel like what's been happening to me my whole life has an explanation. I have almost died a few times in my life. The first was as a little girl. I was almost one of those bunk bed statistics. What? My kids have bunk beds. What do you mean bunk bed statistics? When I was two, I slid through the upper bunk bed railing and was hanging by my neck. My brother found me and ran to get my mom. She told me that when she got to me, I was blue. I eventually regained consciousness, but it was very scary for my mom and my brother. Since then, I have always Always seen ghosts here and there. As a girl, I had my bedroom windows fly open and cold air rush in. There was always the sound of a bouncing basketball at night outside my room. A little girl would stand at the foot of my bed sometimes. I've had voices waking me up at night from people who aren't there and lots more. This all seemed to get exponentially worse after I had a car accident where I almost died in 2017 and had to have surgery and then thyroid cancer surgery in 2020. I started seeing 1111s everywhere all the time multiple times a day, all in different things and it got to be so much that I started to take pictures of the times when I would see it if I could, whether it's the time of the clock or the time a movie was paused by someone, the time someone calls me, randomly seeing it in art, etc. This started a year and a half ago and I have over 400 photos of it and those were just the ones I could take photos of. I had started sending it to my mom and my husband to show them how crazy this was. My husband finally looked into it and said, I think that you should read about this. It makes a lot of sense with what's happening to you. I found it has to do with a spiritual awakening or so I believe. Yep. 
I definitely believe things are happening more and I am understanding more about my gifts. Flash forward to later this year, my grandfather was battling with bladder cancer that metastasized to his hip bones. Oh my goodness. He ended up having fractures in his hips, which ultimately led to him being hospitalized. I stayed by his side for nine days in the hospital as he went into a coma and soon after died. I'm so sorry. While with him, I saw twice what I believed to be his spirit leaving his body. I could tell he didn't want to go because it would start happening when he would stop breathing completely for a long time and then all of a sudden he would take one more big breath and then his spirit would stop leaving. It would happen on or right after around 3 a.m. It almost looks like when you are staring out a window and you can tell it's starting to rain except it was reversed rain coming up from his body going up into the ceiling of the hospital. This is so interesting. The second time was also around 3 a.m. and I saw this white iridescent mist coming from his mouth floating upward in the room. He is a musician and so am I and while he was in the hospital I would play him music every day and sing to him. I also inherited his piano which I play at my house. Before he died or was even in the hospital I had told him about all the 1111s and the spirits that had been visiting me. While he was dying and I asked if he could be my guardian angel which I believe that he is. Since his death I have had many supernatural things happening to me including my feet being touched in my sleep, seeing black shapes floating above me in bed and during the day my entire ceiling has turned into stars slash the night sky, seeing colored orbs, mainly blues and whites and always at night when I'm restless and can't fall asleep. One night a huge white light came into the room and it was as if a figure was standing in front of it looking down at me but I couldn't make out the figure because the light was so blinding. Some nights I'll wake up and open my eyes and see what looks like a neon blue or white writing across the walls that slowly starts moving. They look like shapes and symbols that I don't recognize and they slowly start to fade away. During the daytime I can see dark objects moving around from time to time. It only happens in my home or at my parents house. At my parents home their TV has always turned on and off on its own and I have gone as far as to unplug every wire from the TV and it still turns on. And of course to the white static channel. I wish I was making this shit up. I slept at my friend's house that night. To backtrack a little, we were remodeling our home and so we were living in my parents' basement for three years. I thought things would stop once we left their house, but now that we have moved back into ours, it has only continued in the same fashion. Okay, is anybody else getting like such supernatural vibes from this as I'm watching the show way too much? Like this bright light and the, the white smoke coming out of the mouth and then the symbols on the wall, the iridescent symbols. There were two main things that caused me to get help. Things were moving around in my house. Just one example, I would put my hairbrush away in my bathroom drawer where it always goes and the next day go to use it again and it's not there. I would look all over the place. I asked my husband and my son, neither of which had touched it. I eventually ended up finding it in the drawer in our guest bathroom, which I never use and never would have put a hairbrush in. Another instance, we installed sliding barn doors on the outside of our new pantry. I love sliding barn doors. They're attached to a bar at the tops of the doors, but you are not hooked to anything at the bottom, so you could essentially swing the bottom of the door up away from the wall. One day I was sitting on my couch and then for some reason decided to look over at our pantry doors. I watched one of the doors swung away from the wall, completely lifting up from the bottom about three feet and then slammed back down against the wall as if someone had picked up the base of the door and let it go and it banged against the wall three time three it scared the shit out of me yeah i immediately stood up and ran over to check to see if any of our cats or dogs were over there no one and nothing was there it freaked me out my husband had a really hard time believing that this actually happened after all the things that have been happening once we moved back into our house i decided to contact a reputable medium in our area to make sure that there wasn't anything bad in our house I have never done anything like this before, but she seemed very legitimate. I had her come over to my house. The first thing that she said was, I myself am a medium and I am having a spiritual awakening right now. And that each one of my near death experiences have heightened my gifts each time as if I stepped one foot on the other side, but I am still here. She also said that I am also an empath and absorb other people's energies very easily. So I must be careful when I'm out in the world and meeting new people as I can bring spirits or bad energies back to my home with me. She said my home was absolutely full of spirits, none of which she senses to be evil. She said there is an older gentleman here who is leading the charge and is very much ready to speak. She was a medical medium and so she could sense the way people had died. Before she came over, she said she didn't want to know my last name or any information about me. The only thing she wanted to know before we met was if anyone I knew had died a violent death so that she could prepare herself if she were to feel that. She sat down and said, this older gentleman is here. Then said, my hips, my hips hurt so bad. I don't know why my hips hurt. She said, this seems very weird question to ask, but do you know if anyone died of something related to their hips? And I said, yes, that's my grandfather. He just died. He had bone cancer in his hips. She told me that he was the one who has been moving stuff around my house. And the reason he was doing that was so that I could contact her because he had things he needs to say through her. My mind was blown. She then looked at me and said, your grandfather brought another older man with him. He and this gentleman met for the first time today, she said. This man, he is so proud of his race cars. He is so thoroughly proud of his race cars. And I said, holy shit, that's my husband's grandfather, Grandpa Sonny. 
He's famous for making race cars. She said he's there with a dog named Brutus, which I don't know whether he had a dog named Brutus. I asked my husband's mother later, and sure enough, he had a dog named Brutus. She then went on to say grandfather was a stubborn man who didn't always listen to his body when things were going wrong. She said that he is with your husband's grandfather because they have a message for your husband. Your grandfather and he are saying he needs to get off his stubborn ass and go to the doctor. He needs to go have a liver enzyme panel done right now. I looked at her and was shocked because lately my husband has been very fatigued and tired and actually really off. I also thought to myself, wow, this is a very random thing to suggest going and getting tested. She then said, your grandfather wants him to know this because he did not listen to his body when he knew something was wrong and that ultimately led to his death. There was a lot more that happened in my meeting with the medium. I had booked her for an hour. She ended up staying at my house with me for four hours because she was so fascinated by the fact that I was also a medium and wanted to help me understand things better. The next day I called the doctor and made an appointment for my husband to get a full blood panel done across the board, which included liver enzyme panel. We got the results back and his liver enzyme levels were way off. It has been six months of testing now and we have found that he has two rare genetic mutations in his DNA that affect his liver enzymes, both of which are very hard to diagnose and super rare. Thank you, Grandpa Sunny and Grandpa Tom. We now know how to get my husband to help and he is on the road to healing. My husband still has a hard time believing that my grandpa and his grandpa brought this message to him and that the pantry door did what it did. But last month I went off on a cruise with my mom and my husband was alone in the house and the pantry door swung away from the wall and bushed back down. Our dogs were barking and growling in the direction of the pantry and my husband said he got up to look and nothing was there. It was as if our grandpas were like, okay, you stubborn ass, do you believe us now? <laughs> he never makes me feel bad when I tell him of all the things that happened to me when they do, but now I think he gets it a bit more. Anyway, thank you for hearing my story. I guess my final questions for you would be, is there anything that you think I should do to try to understand my gifts more? I don't want to bring anything bad into my life. I feel as if they are uncontrollable right now. I've been trying to read books to understand what's happening to me and how I could potentially use it to help other people. Let me know if you think I am a medium like I was told or if something else is going on. Thank you for taking the time to read this. This is a really cool story. I love that the grandpas literally saved your husband, like literally. I don't personally know anything about being a medium or if you are one or what to do, but you know, we have this whole community and I'm sure, I'm sure that some people out there can give you some advice or some suggestions. So guys, if you have any advice or suggestions or opinions on this, please let this person know. Also, any comments on the story, put them down there. You know, I love to hear all your comments and thoughts and everything on all the stories that we read. I love you guys so much. Thank you for sharing. That concludes our creepy compilation for today. If you enjoyed this, you might also enjoy catching me live on TikTok where we hang out, read people's stories, and chat about them. We have an awesome community of open, loving, and accepting people where our motto is, we believe you. That community extends to Discord as well. Please come and join us in Discord. You can hang out with like-minded people and I have an announcements channel where I announce things like when I'm going live on TikTok, when I'm posting a new YouTube video, when I'm dropping new merch. It's just a good place to be. You can get the links to my TikTok, my Discord, and everything else over at tescavision.com, linked in the description. In the meantime, you might want to keep it going here and check out this video or this playlist.